A big thank you to today's sponsor, DistroKid. If you're looking for a platform to start distributing your music, there's a 7% discount linked in the description of this video. I've been with them for years now. I'll be giving you a few reasons why I think they are the best music distribution platform out there later in this video. This is my buddy, Pat, and he uh, he knows his shit when it comes to anything Ableton related or electronic music related. So pleasure to have him here. The first thing we'll show is the problem. Yeah. Okay. So like, let's just maybe the just, problem. exactly. I'm going to make an exaggerated version of the problem. This is how it's supposed to sound. And see if when I turn it up, we're getting a filter cutoff. Not too bad in terms of responsiveness. Now I set up something that's going to exaggerate the problem. So, <laughs> okay, open the filter. I mean, I'm gonna close the filter. That took a Sweet really baby long Jesus. Time. <laughs> so that that is an exaggerated version of what we're gonna try and solve today. Right, and so also if you if you stack plugins, and even if it's stock plugins which don't have a lot of latency. If you stack a bunch of them on top of each other, it just adds, 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 right? So, it... Yeah, there are certain scenarios where you're going to be stacking latency upon latency. Right. I'm gonna show you the different ways that you can add effects and plugins into your system to add a minimal amount of latency. Okay. But the first thing we need to look at is if I have let's say no effects, where is there gonna be latency? And the first thing has to do with your sound card, right? So if all the audio is starting from inside Ableton and then it has to go out of your sound card, coming out of your sound card, there's gonna be already a little bit of latency. Right now, if I look at your ensemble, we have a Navigy ensemble here, mm -hmm. but this could be any sound card. Your sound card's gonna have kind of a different numbers. Mm -hmm. If I look over here, it says output latency is 12.7 milliseconds. Right. That means I'm already at 12 milliseconds of latency. And like the general rule of thumb for it to feel pretty immediate mm -hmm. would be like seven to 10 milliseconds is what we're aiming for, for the whole system. Right. Anything more, it starts to feel like a little bit laggy. Mm -hmm. The first way we could reduce that is our classic changing the buffer size. So if we go to a smaller buffer size sample rate, we're going to help that out a lot. So if I go to 64, now our output latency is 2.49. Right. That's already a lot. It's pretty much zero. Pretty close. Yeah. Try putting it as low as you can go. As you can see here, there is an option for 32. I didn't do 32. The smaller the buffer size is gonna be, the more chances are you're gonna have uh, cracks and pops because yeah. the CPU load is gonna be higher. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of put it as low as you can before you start having problems with the sound cracking and popping. Right. Another thing is if you put the sample rate higher, again, more CPU load, it also makes the file sizes larger. However, it actually reduces latency. Okay. Like that one from Mitch Gallagher at Sweetwater. Interesting. Thanks, Mitch. <laughs> well, by the way, I have to stop here. Yep. We're, we're color coordinated right now. Yeah. We did not coordinate this. This wasn't on purpose. <laughs> it just happened. Or was it? <laughs> okay, so going into our session, right now, for simplicity's sake, I just have two tracks, no return tracks or anything. Mm -hmm. They're playing on time with each other. Fantastic. If I start putting in plugins that add a lot of latency, I like using the RX stuff because the amount of latency it adds is like absurd mm -hmm. to really kind of demonstrate the problem. So now if I put this on this one track, now this track, the drums track, has this plugin and should be out of time with this clav. Mm -hmm. So if I press play, yeah, it takes a while, it takes like a second. But what you noticed is the two are still in sync. Right. And like you pointed out, there was a delay from when I pressed play to actually playing. Right. So the reason for that is because when we go into options, there's delay compensation. Okay. So what that means, if I turn this off, 
Now, this is kind of like the truth behind the scenes yeah, yeah. of what's going on. Right. You can hear that the clav and the drums are out of time because I added this plugin that's adding latency on just this track. Got it. And that option in Ableton, delay compensation, what it's doing is it's saying, okay, well, that's no good. We obviously need all the tracks to be playing in time. So I'm going to let the drum tracks go first because mm -hmm. it's got that latency and when the timing is right i'm gonna throw in the clav if you if let's say you have several different plugins on all these different tracks yeah it has to compensate for each and every one of them which probably would use more cpu is that correct well more plugins would technically just mean more cpu more cpu does not necessarily mean more latency Okay. Those two things, there is a connection between them, but it isn't necessarily that. Okay. One on one connected. Uh, right now, I duplicated the drum tracks, which, and each one of these tracks has this plugin on it that has a lot of latency. Mm -hmm. However, when I press play, it's gonna be a lot of drums. It's the, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna do it through the blocker <laughs> system. I'm gonna have the same amount of latency as I did when I had just these two tracks. Mm -hmm. Reason being is because the amount of latency that has to do with effects is equal to the longest path that an audio has to go through. Okay. Okay, so like, let's say each path of audio is um, a car driving through traffic. Okay? okay, so right now the path is pretty simple. We got this car, which is our clavs, that's going through this track into the master channel out of the sound card. And then this track, which is the drums, is hitting this plugin, which yeah. is a traffic light. Right, right. <laughs> which is the delaying the amount of time it has to get to the master track and then out to the sound card. Right. Seems simple. So the longest path is just this track going through this one plugin into the master. Yeah. If I then had another track somewhere that had two plugins that equal to a longer amount of latency, now the overall latency is equal to this track's path. Yeah. Because okay. this track has okay. the most amount of latency. Right. And the reason why I'm like kind of painting this picture of like paths it seems simple right now because it's just individual tracks, but once you start nesting things into groups and then sending to sends and stuff, then you have to start seeing, okay, well, the trajectory of the path is getting more complicated. How many stop signs am I getting to before yeah. reaching my final destination? Right. So how do we calculate that? Simple way, first thing, when I hover my mouse over the title of a plugin, Ableton graciously tells us the amount of latency right down here. There you go. In the number of samples and in milliseconds. 667 milliseconds. Yeah, this plugin is an absurd amount of latency. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> you would never want to perform with this plugin. No. Uh, it's obviously made for uh, mixing and post production, but I'm using it a lot to demonstrate because it's really audible the amount of latency. Right. Let's make things a little bit more complicated now and uh, see if we can keep up. I'm going to duplicate this a bunch of times and put this through a group, insert a return channel. I'm gonna use a, a plugin that has a smaller number. You know what? We're gonna go with a stock plugin. You might not expect there to be latency in the stock Ableton plugins, but some of them. Well, maybe, are. maybe, maybe uh, add a plugin that's like a bit, a bit more performance, like practical oriented. You know what I mean? So like, if just so we get a perfect idea of like maybe a delay or something like that. I don't think any of the delays have. Oh, they don't have latency. Yeah, maybe. Really? Not. Yeah, you'll see. Uh, most of them don't. Okay, so um, so okay, and interesting. That's okay. pretty cool. Yeah, uh, because Ableton's made for performing. Yeah. So they obviously try to reduce the amount of latency as much as possible. And if right. it's in there, it's because it absolutely needs to be. Okay, so this is one that's actually usually in someone's live set, though, is the limiter. And okay. there's, there is 2.9 milliseconds of, that's almost three milliseconds of latency. Okay. Doesn't seem like a lot, but. It is, because if you have up. three of them, okay. then we're, we're already reaching our close to 10 maximum right. milliseconds, and that's without the sound cards right. latency as well. 
And now let's talk about today's sponsor, DistroKid. Here's a few reasons why you should be using DistroKid as opposed to other music distribution platforms, especially if you're an independent artist or producer. Firstly, they're on the cutting edge of social media and new music promotional tools. They're definitely the pioneers in that sense because their platform depends on people like us, independent artists and producers, to use these tools to promote our own music. The amount of stores or streaming platforms that DistroKid distributes to is insane. And they also keep up to date with smaller or up and coming platforms that you might not even know about or have access to. So a perfect example of this is a platform called KKBox, which DistroKid distributes to. You think that Spotify is my biggest streaming earner, but it's actually not KKBox is. So thank you DistroKid for keeping track of that. Also banking info and withdrawal is very easy to set up. DistroKid does not take a cut. They deliver 100% of streaming royalties to you. No extra charge independent artists and producers, there is a reason why DistroKid distributes one third of the world's music. Here's an example of how your latency can kind of accumulate in a session without you even really realizing. So let's follow this track, okay? I'm gonna change the color <laughs> to yeah. make it look, you know, keep our attention on it. So on the track, I have an EQ8. You'll see down here actually has 16 samples of latency. Seems like nothing at first. Mm -hmm. um, and actually it only has it because if I right click, uh, the oversampling is on. Mm. And this is, you can check this out too because there's a lot of Ableton effects that do this. They'll have like a high quality mode or something that add latency to it. If I take it off, it goes back to zero, but maybe it was on by accident. And then you have some latency. So I have 0.36 milliseconds. But then that signal is going to this group, which goes into a saturator. Right. Four samples of latency. Well, now that car went through one stop sign and then went through another stop sign. Right. I'd, and yeah. now we have to add those amounts up. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't end there because we decided to put the send amount over here. Mm -hmm. Now that signal went through all of that <laughs> amount right. of latency and the send is going here that goes through a delay with zero latency, but then there's a limiter after with 2.9 milliseconds of latency. So now that's right. another stop sign. We have to add that 2.9 milliseconds. It's, like, it's at like five, four or five seconds now probably. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think it's that much. But I mean, regardless- But we see your point, yeah. Regardless what the point. numbers are, it's it adds just- up. You have to add all of those. Yeah. And then where does that go after? That goes to the master that I had a limiter on with another 2.9 right. milliseconds. So if you follow the chains of each one of your audio paths mm -hmm. and you start calculating, you'll start finding which ones end up having the largest amount of accumulated right. latency. And that's the amount of overall latency in your session. And then you add that to the output latency here to find right, right, right. your final number. Okay. And then you either are like, oh yeah, it's still zippy. It's still within that kind of range I was looking for. Or you're like, this is just way too much latency. I need to do something about it. Okay. Maybe switch some effects in and out. Yeah. This is something I'll just kind of throw in there. If you guys have been watching this channel recently, you know that the model 1.4 has been rocking my world recently. There's something about the latency. It makes it, makes it less real. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you use yeah. hard if you use hardware effects, it's super immediate and it's like a little bit more specific. But I think once again, and this has kind of been the uh, my mantra of this year is going hybrid. So like having a mix of hardware effects and then maybe having some Ableton effects as well, because these are obviously the most convenient. But in my experience, they don't feel quite as real. Cool thing about a hybrid system too is let's say you had everything going on in Ableton sending audio to this kind of a setup and most of your performance is coming from handling the analog side of things or hardware side of things. Right. Then you could stack up tons of latency on here. It would just be compensated and coming in here and then everything you're doing yeah. Yeah. is really responsive and immediate. Right, but then in, in that case, you wouldn't be able to use like perform like. But then when you have a MIDI controller. And, yeah. Then you would feel that. Yeah. Right, right, right. Cool thing about hardware in the analog domain is like it's so 
there is no latency. So you can actually do exactly. like true feedback loops. Feedback loops don't actually exist in the digital domain, like true feedback. So if I send to a send track, and then that send track is then piped out into another audio track. Yeah. And I have that audio track send back. That's actually going to cause a lot of latency because there there is no such thing as true feedback. We call it they call it infinite loop, I think. And and actually, if you set this up, you'll notice that things start going out of sync. And the way to um, get rid of that latency is to right click on this send and go disable send. Because now you just disable the ability for it to try to do feedback. Right. And it will solve that okay. problem. Cool. Is there any other like latency related things that you want to mention in this video? Once you get a system that is within that limit of responsiveness, man, it just, it feels good. It feels, it starts to feel more real. Kind of yeah. like what you were saying. Yeah. Hunt down your latency, get it on log and have fun performing. Well, thanks for being here. My pleasure. And uh, see you guys soon. Ciao.